Gamers, what's the strangest encounter you've had with players online? Had some guy just start reading 50 shades of grey on GTA V. The whole chat went silent as we all listened only to erupt into laughter as the guy reading finally lost his composure. I was playing a game of Mountain Blade, Napoleonic Wars. Bear in mind each game has 250 players. My team was defending a large house surrounded by walls. A unique thing about the game is that you can choose to play bagpipers and various other characters with musical instruments. So I was running around the house and I saw a piano. So I went over and started picking tunes to play on it. A few seconds later a squad of musicians come running down the stairs and just start playing with me. Eventually almost the entire team was down there dancing by toggling crouch. Out of nowhere a cannonball came flying through the wall and the piano and killed me. Then all of a sudden on chat someone typed. Comma they killed the piano man. And a few moments later someone else typed. Comma forward. For the piano man and then charged out of the newly formed hole in the wall and the entire team followed shouting the same in the chat. It was hilarious and bewildering at the same time. Would play Splinter Cell multiplayer way back. One of the many neat features of that game was cross teams comms would only work when the spy had the merc in a choke hold. You could essentially whisper something into your enemy's ear before you choke them out or snap neck finish them. One occasion I was playing as a merc and got caught up by a spy and over my earpiece I heard taste the rainbow bee and he snapped my neck. I laughed so hard. I was playing R6 Siege a few months ago and we had a team member who would say exactly this over voice chat when he killed someone. In the game Elite. Dangerous I was flying around in a more populated area when I got interdicted by a wing of Orcus. Very large fast ship. Great for ramming other ships. One of the players rings my ship for voice comms and I accept. Hoping to talk my way out of a hostile situation. Nope. He blasts circus music and they all start flying at me at insane speeds. I didn't get away. But I laughed in the end. That's perfect. I was helping people defeat a particular boss in Dark Souls, Seath the Scaleless. There was this one guy that I had been connecting to all night amidst the other people. After maybe 3 hours of helping people, I had connected to his world like 10 times, and still no luck. After a while, I decided to switch it up and start invading. Well, I ended up in his world again, as an invader this time, instead of an ally. I was so emotionally torn. You can't communicate directly in Dark Souls multiplayer, but you can use some basic gestures. We had shared all sorts of funny moments together, and sort of became wordless friends over the course of the evening. So now, unsure of what to do, I just unequipped all of my weapons and turned my back to him to show vulnerability and trust. And well, he did the same in response. After a little dancing, we headed into the dungeon. As an invader, I couldn't hurt any of the enemies. But I just went up and swung my sword at them anyways. I just kind of pretended to be his ally, and we made it to the boss door again together. Once we were there, we both stood still for a while. We spun around a bit, unsure of how to proceed. I went up to him, dropped 5 humanity items. It's a useful item in the game. Not super rare, but convenient to get for free. Waved at him, and ran off a cliff, leaving him free to fight the boss. I never connected to his world again, so as far as I can tell, he was able to do it alone after all, with a little encouragement along the way. In DS3, I was invaded by a watchdog who had no weapon, no armor, and wearing a symbol of avarice. He ran around the bonfire dropping 50 symbols of avarice until he died from the health loss. It was silly. Modern Warfare 2 I've posted about this before on a different thread, I forget the name of the map, but it was the big grass one with the radioactive perimeter and the cave bunker in the middle. I've been told it's wasteland. My friends and I would all equip riot shields and move around like Spartans in the phalanx formation. Without talking to the other team or communicating with them in any way, they also started moving in the phalanx formation and eventually it evolved into a riot shield fight club inside the bunker. Two guys would go into the middle and start ramming each other with their shields while the rest of us were standing around them in a circle, jumping. It was one of the funniest and strangest things I have ever seen. The fact that there is another group of friends out there as weird as mine, and we ran into them was very surprising. Playing runescape back in the day, 
This girl met me can I be a GF and followed me around all day and kept world hopping when I switched worlds. Not sure if she he was serious or trolling, but it was for a good 5-6 hours. I remember going to a house in that game and two players, a male and a female, declared they were GF and BF, went into a bedroom, stood next to the bed and started typing sex noises into the chat. Weird as freak. Traveling with a friend on day Z. We're playing on a semi-RP server, so cost generally doesn't happen and you're supposed to try and interact with each other. You know, talk things out. Well, we noticed that someone was following us as we looted around town. We had the car fixed up, so we decide to get the heck out of there just in case. We don't shoot him on sight because of the server rules. About an hour later, we're basically on the other side of the map looting up the Myshkino military base. We often check our car, make sure nobody is messing with it. Sure enough, that same guy is there again, and he's messing with our car's inventory. We fire a few warning shots and he takes off into the woods. My friend is shouting over the mic that he's gonna get that mofo. He's chasing him into the woods. But I stop to check our car, see what he took. Yak now, I burst out laughing. Me, dude, let him go. He didn't take anything. Friend, what? Why was he messing with the car? Me, bro, he filled our entire car with pieces of paper. There's like 60 pieces of paper in here, and they all say paper 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 in red ink. Literally every single one had been wrote on. Back in the day I was on a random Minecraft server and I left my base to go mining. When I got back I saw someone inside and asked in the chat why he was in there. He asked for my Skype name and then called me. What happened next was a hostage situation. He'd rigged my house with TNT and said if I didn't give him all my valuables he'd blow the house up. Server had locked chests but not any anti-griefing systems. To prove he was serious he took my dog to the window and killed him. A few of the mods from the server were online and nearby. So came over and asked if they wanted me to kick and ban him. I thought it was quite funny so let it play out, and tried to talk, that lasted a second before he blew the place up. Happy ending though, they banned him then helped me build a new house. R.I.P. Cecil though. It's kinda fun with an adult, but imagine doing that to a 10 year old kid who spent his past 6 months building the house and taming a dog of his own. I was playing GTA Online a few months ago when a group of 4 guys in stealth military gear pulled up to me in their armored car. They all got out and pointed their guns at me, telling me to get in. Me, being a quite passive player decided to go with the roleplay and get in. We drove for about 10 minutes while they squabbled with each other about what to do with me until we reached this abandoned lumber yard deep in the woods. There, they escorted me inside where I was forced to stay in the corner. Two of them went outside to meet with another guy, my buyer I assume. I decided that this might be the time to leave so I came up with an interesting way to escape. I put a bounty on their heads, called muggers to come rob them, called in a private militia to distract them, and I called Lester, Hackerman, to hide my marker on the map. Once they all arrived to fight my captors, a fight fight ensued. I jumped through a window and ran away into the woods for a minute or two when I came across a railway. I could hear them in the distance realizing that I was gone and they ran after me since my marker had reappeared by now. Deus Ex Machina kicked in and the train arrived just before they got the killing shot on me. So I hopped into the train and zipped away. They got into their armored car and followed me while I tried to shoot out their tires. They had just about caught up with me when another player on the server arrived to come help me in his attack chopper. My new friend killed the captors, picked me up, and flew me back to the city where I hid in his company headquarters. We smoked some weed and drank some whiskey while half the server waited patiently outside the building for me to come outside. Eve is plenty weird so mine is sort of mundane but whatever. As a brief primer on Eve, in normal space, there is this thing called local which is the chat window for the system. It lists all players currently in the system, so you always know if there's someone there. Then there's wormhole space. There is no local. You only appear there once you enter a message into the chat window. You could be surrounded by 20 players ready to murder you and you wouldn't know till you went pop. There is a thing called scan though that reveals most ships in the local area around you, which is to say around 14.3 or. Part of the culture of wormhole space then is that you don't talk in local. Ever. Not for any reason. This led to an odd situation once upon a time when I was running around in wormhole space. 
I had named my ship please don't shoot or something similar. I hit my scan and discovered a ship called oh yes I will. In jest, I renamed my ship to please no. On my next scan hit, the ship had changed to coming to kill you. I then proceeded to have a conversation for a few minutes purely by constantly changing the name of my ship and never once using the chat function provided in game. I was playing Rust a little bit ago and started a war between my group of 5 friends and the admin's group of buds. He was a cool admin. It all started when we saw two men strolling outside our abode butt naked. This being a rare spectacle we greeted them with our rifles and invited them inside. We designed an airlock kind of design on our house so we told them to stay in the decompression part of the entrance while we fetched supplies to give them. After we gave them some nice clothing and weapons that we had found, we invited them to our morning ritual to worship the sun god. Every morning, as the sun rose, we would fire off 10 rounds at the sky to honor its return. We even built a giant obelisk that you would climb with a platform at the top for where you shoot. Our acquaintances followed and upon firing off our fifth shot or so I had declared that the god demands a sacrifice to my friend. We paused and both gunned down our new friends while making you walk like screams. The next 4 hours consisted of 5 guys trying to snipe us in our home while we tried to counter snipe them. It was a blast. Russ is my favorite game to read about. The stories are all so crazy. Someday I'll have a decent enough computer to actually play it. The first time I got invaded in a Souls game, I was in the undead church area in DS1, and then the words invaded by dark spirit Yoko is my waifu flash across my screen. Oh god, I think, I'm freaking dead, I don't know crap, he's hidden disguised as a pot in the church, I know this because he was following me around, like, right on my heels, I attack him, and the illusion fades, he's a big, massive buttholes, he waves at me, I panic and backstab him, for damage, oh christ, it's a hacker, he emotes again, then drops an item on the ground, that item is 10 twin humanities, a veritable fortune this early in the game, he then spent 20 minutes running around showing me all the secrets in the area and helping me unlock Latrek before piecing out, wherever you are, benevolent hacker Yoko is my waifu, I'll always remember you. I was playing one of the earlier COD games and a little kid came on the mic. Sounded like he was maybe 7 or 8. I probably wasn't the only one who was getting ready to hear about he fricked somebody's mom. Anyway, the kid is super polite, says hello to everybody on the team and asks if we mind working together so we don't ruin his KDR. He organized us pretty well. Made sure only a couple of us played sniper loadouts and had us organized by loadouts as we made our way around the map as a team using covering fire and a couple strategic flanks. I'm not sure what was more impressive, that the little kid organized it all and was super nice, or that everyone on the team listened to him and we all worked together. We cleaned house that match and I never saw him again. Same thing happened to me in World of Tanks. Kid jumps in the lobby and starts giving everybody orders. We all followed them and proceeded to win the game very quickly. I just sat back in astonishment at what just happened. Some kid probably 20 years younger than me just organized that whooping. Once while playing Team Fortress 2 with my friends, we encountered an Australian who seemed quite intent on proving he was better than us. He did this by shouting phrases such as I'm in a club. Are you in a club and go brush your teeth. Gave us a good laugh. Snippin's a good job mate. A leader of one of the top guilds who was in an online relationship with one of the best PvE players apparently pretended to be a girl for more than 7 years. Mind you, it was one of the top PvE guilds. People there basically played 7 plus hours per day, and this dude managed to pretend to be a girl, even in TS, for 7 dang years. I met a girl through TF2, we played for a while, and then she wanted my Skype information to play some more another time because she was leaving. Sure thing, here you go, she added me right away. I accept, she video calls me, flashes her titties and hangs up. Niais. When I played the really old version of Rust, like before they made it into a completely different game, things were pretty fricked. So in Rust when you leave the game, your guy doesn't disappear like in most games. He just lies down and goes to sleep wherever you are standing. People can kill you and take your crap while you sleep. In some servers people would form large groups, 
build big fortresses and hoard all the nice guns and armor. And guys in full Kevlar armor with Fackley shotguns and assault rifles would actually go out and enslave solo players who were just starting out. They would say that they would kill you if you do anything and you couldn't leave cause they kill you in your sleep. They would say that they would free you in the future and let you keep your crap if you just did some work for them. They gave you a stone hatchet and made you go out and smash rocks for like an hour or so. Rust was freaking crazy back in the day. TL. DR. 12 years old psychopaths made gangs and enslaved people. I once had a giant prison in Ark that housed 30 people. Only half of which were gone at one time. It lasted a week before we imprisoned the wrong person and got raided so hard that Russia was a part of the counter-attack. I loved making prisons in Ark. We used to collect about 5-10 prisons and then put them in our battle area and had them fight to the death with the winner being released with some sort of reward. I was playing Starcraft one day. The usual GLHFSR said and we begin our game. The dude takes a fast natural and all is normal on the scouting front. But then he just stops playing. I go and scout around the map and he's straight up stopped building anything. I just walk into his base and killing his crap while rather confused that someone's just afk'd in a game of SE as opposed to pausing or leaving. He then messages me not long after the game and says crap sorry my dad just cut off his finger. I'm late as frick but it has to be in chivalry. Medieval warfare. We were getting our asses handed to us on a silver platter. Eventually, everyone on the team just unanimously decided to spawn as a knight. Shields in front of us. Standing at the objective. Spamming no. Im lord over. And over. And over again. No one talked. No one typed. This all just happened without anyone needing to convey anything. We lost. But I'll never. Ever forget being a part of the Knights of Number. May our impenetrable wall be told in the halls of Valhalla. This is not even that weird but so goddamn coincidental. Back in the good old days I used to play a lot of Minecraft. I would go on kingdom servers with friends and we'd create a kingdom and create castles and fight other kingdoms. One day some random, then random, dude wants to join our kingdom. He was called something like Shavex Mixballs but translated in Dutch, Shirks Jexpelha, or something like that. We were like oh well, more souls more joy and we let him in. Invited him to the Skype call. Turns out this guy was in my football team and that I've known him for like 6 years. Pretty cool. That's insane. Small world. Had a buddy in 8th grade that met a girl that was in our class. On Minecraft. They dated for 3 years after that. Had a guild leader who lost a son. This particular leader was pretty much in butthole. And he made a few enemies because he treated people like crap and governed his little game fiefdom through a combination of bullying tactics. So fast forward to me joining his group. We were in the common gathering area together. And some people started making fun of him for losing a son in text chat. So this poor, drunk son of a bitch just starts crying on voice chat. Which of course the people making fun of him on text couldn't even hear. He was screaming crap like, you'll never know my pain and crap like that. Almost like when Ricky Bobby is running around on fire. It was so bizarre. It went on for a long time. And I was just thinking WTF. Then a week or so later, literally the same scenario played out. Turns out, the people making fun of him were former in-game friends of his who he had kicked out of his group gradually over time. Because he was a total hot-headed clusterfuck of a leader. And this was what they did every time they saw him in-game. And every time, he would lose his crap and whatever we were doing would be cancelled so he could drown his sorrows and rant over voice chat about how nobody could know his pain. It was really a fricked up situation. I eventually left the group, because I just couldn't take it anymore. On my way out he criticized me for leaving, saying I was just like the rest of them. I felt bad for the guy, but crap. I really did not want to hear this guy cry about his dead son every night after work when all I wanted was to unwind and play some games. He probably needed professional help, but I think I was too shocked by how nonsensical the whole thing was to even bring up the subjects to him, especially as a new member of an established group of friends. Hope he's okay. Man, I don't care how much of an butthole the dude was. That crap's off limits. Seriously, whoever would use the loss of a child as a weapon especially over a game, is a piece of crap, through and through. When I was playing the BF1 beta there was this obnoxious kid on the microphone just yelling and screaming, 
as they normally do. He got silent for a bit and you can hear his sister yelling at him for breaking her iPod. He started screaming that he didn't do it. Then his mother came in, started yelling at him and then you could hear the mom smack the crap out of the boy a few times. Really loud smacks. Everyone started cracking up but then we eventually heard the kid. He was sobbing and sounded like he was really in pain. He kept playing, just sobbing and saying it hurt. Jesus. That poor kid. I was playing the culling, which if you don't know is a survival pvp game where everyone scavenged weapons and supplies and has a free for all in a huge outdoor space. Anyway, I was walking a trail when a dude stepped out from behind a tree and started to approach me. I had a weapon ready so that I could defend myself, but he stopped near me and didn't attack. Instead he started jumping up and down, and soon enough I did too. We basically instated a non-verbal truce at that point, and went running into the mountains. We spent a chunk of the game picking up rocks and giving them to each other. Eventually someone else came across us, who didn't take kindly to the jumping invitation. We were both blown up using a remote explosive, and that was the end of it. I do this constantly with newer players in the culling. I will mess with them and try to teach them the game usually showing them all aspects of fighting. A lot of games I will aggressively throw bandages at people and run away. Not really weird, but me and my friends were playing Overwatch and after the match ended there was a flame war. I don't remember much, but one of the guy's insults was I bet you drink lukewarm water. That phrase is now an ongoing inside joke. One of my favorite interactions in Overwatch went something like, Hey, Roadhog you dirty H. Your mother is a classy woman who raised her children with love and care. B. Don't make me treat you to a nice time. A. I'd have a great time. B. Fine. A. Fine. B. What kind of wine do you like? A. I'm sure whatever you pick will be lovely. It went on from there for a while. Used to play WoW in the days before Wrath of the Kitchen King. Played with a guy who ran a hunter. He was older than us but was still cool with playing with me and my friends. One day he said he was going to go to Blizzcon that year and he wouldn't log in for a bit because of it. So we wished him a good time. He never came back. He still comes up in conversation between me and my friend who also played with him. We say he's in the big Blizzcon in the sky now. Maybe not that strange. But certainly my favorite interaction with a player online. This was back in vanilla wow days before looking for group systems. Player. Can I join your Numerican dungeon party? Me. No. He was too low level. A few moments later. Player. Can I join your Numerican dungeon party? Me. Do you have Alzheimer's? Player. No can you share? was playing payday 2 and was waiting in the lobby for another player to join before starting. A guy shows up and I say hi to be polite. First thing that comes out of this guy's mouth is, have you ever wanted to staple your vagina shut no random internet person? No I haven't. I guarantee he was talking to his friends on VoIP, and they were talking about weird crap like that, and he decided to ask you to get a laugh with his friends. Source, do this on a regular basis was playing Star Wars Tour a couple years back and was on one of the smaller planets, can't remember which, at the starting area. A top level stealth class guy kept backstabbing me whenever I spawned, and, unfortunately for me, none of the NPC guards were stationed near the back of the base where I respawned. After a 4-5 deaths, I just decided to have fun with it. I didn't try to run or fight, I just turned and waved to him. He stopped, paused, and waved back. We then began dancing together in a glorious display of friendship rivaling Christmas Day during World War I. Then I announced on faction chat that I was distracting a high level ganker through the power of dance and got someone to come kill him for me. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.